Hello friends, it's Shari and today I'm making a really fun platform pop-up card inspired by Neverland from Peter Pan. But I'm going to do it a little different. I'm not going to have Peter Pan, so I'm using the ship from Ahoy Matey, the rock from Mermaid for You, and I'm going to use the mermaid from the Mermaid for You flip-flop. I brought out the fairy, but I actually did not end up using a fairy for Tinkerbell. And then I have this little shooting star. So I've stamped all my pieces out. And this piece of fabric is the inspiration for my card and my colors today. So it's always fun to kind of look around your craft room or even look in the store and get some inspiration. I really liked the color palette on this one. It's different for me. And so I thought I would challenge myself to do something a little bit out of my comfort zone as far as colors go. So I'm starting out coloring my mermaid. These are all stamped in jet black ink so that I can color with my Copic markers. I have a very light tail on her and then I actually struggled with her hair a little bit. I wanted to do kind of a streaky stripe look because that's what one of the little mermaids looks like on the fabric, but it just, it wasn't really working for me. So you're going to see me kind of go back and forth with my two very light pinks here. I'm using the little bullet tip on that one to kind of smooth it out. So I didn't really get that texture of hair like I wanted, but I have that really pretty pink hair. I used an R22 for the top of her bathing suit, I guess, <laughs> not her tail. And then I'm using some dark skin tones for her. So I've used that darker under her hairline and where the shadows are, and then I blend out with that lighter color. Now the rock, I'm going to use some BV colors. These are not colors I use very often, which is why this is a challenge for me to use a different color scheme. And of course, this is kind of different for a rock to color it in this blue-violet color. One fun thing about using a piece of fabric for some inspiration is it usually has a limited color palette because of the way fabric is printed. So usually they're using the same tones over and over again. So you're gonna see me use something similar to this for the mountains that I create in the background. So it was interesting to try and find ink colors that matched the Copic colors and worked well together. I'm using these same BV colors on my boat. So I've colored that little flag and then I'm adding some stripes to the sails. So they're going to be white and blue violet stripes. This is just a fun little detail. I really like the way that this turned out. And then of course I have some browns for my boat. So I'm just using the lightest of the browns for the hull of the boat. And then the little crow's nest up top, I'll use a darker brown for the mast. And then I'll use an even darker one for the port portholes on the side so that they're dark and look like windows. I'm just using that medium brown that I use for the mast to kind of give it some shading. And then this is where I'm gonna bring in that darkest brown for the portholes down in the hull of the ship. Now I didn't color my fairy because I decided I didn't want to use that. And I found that the purple Watercolor Wishes rainbow paper had kind of that blue violet tone to it. I cut the bottom off so I'm gonna get two colors in my stripes and I have two six by six squares. So I'm cutting it so that the outside of my box is that more blue tone and then the top of my box where my kind of waves, where my mermaid and my boat are gonna sit are going to be that lighter purple color. So that's more of a reddish purple. And I've cut two of these, of course, and it works out perfectly with this paper. You get the same color tones in the same spot as long as you cut them 
the same way. And then I'm just folding on the score lines that the die creates to create the folds of my box. So I'll repeat the same thing on that second piece so that they both are the same. And then I can add some double-sided tape to the little tabs on each of these die cuts. So there's the little tab on the kind of box part, and then there's the big tab that holds the top together. Now I'm not using the die to cut my pieces for my inserts. I'm going to cut them out of Bristol cardstock and cut them with a different border die. So I'm just measuring. And of course the one that goes in the center can be a little wider. So the one that goes in the center, I'm going to cut at three and three quarters wide. And then the one in the front is going to be two and three quarters wide. And the same is gonna go for the back piece, but I'm gonna cut that actually out of a tall piece because I'm going to use the mountain border die to cut some mountains. Now you can see my pieces here, they're a little taller than what you saw me cut initially because I sort of cut my waves and changed my plans. So don't worry, there's still three and three quarters and two and three quarters. I'm using the wavy border dies and I'm just placing my images where I want them so I can kind of figure out where I want the waves to go. I want my ship to kind of go in this little dip of a wave and then my mermaid can go on that little hump. And then this tall piece is where my mountains are gonna go. So I'm gonna use the larger of the two and I'm going to fit it to where I get two mountains across it. And they're going to be nice and tall above my waves in that center piece. So I'll just die cut all these out. And like I said before, they're cut from some Bristol cardstock so I can do some ink blending. I felt that chip sapphire was the best blue color to kind of match the color on the fabric that I'm using as my inspiration and it matches that blue violet color that I use for the rock. So I've put that all over the top and then on the bottom I'm just coming in with some uncharted mariner which has a little bit more of a teal color to it just to give it a little bit of interest with some different colors. It's not a big change in the color blend. You could just do all one color. Now for the waves, I'm using milled lavender. That one matches nicely to that more reddish purple color that's in the pattern paper that I used. And I'm just going all over with that milled lavender. And then I'm going to come in and do something darker on the bottom with some dusty concord. And then I'll just go back to the milled lavender blending tool and blend that line away. So it's just a little touch of something darker along the bottom. And then of course, I'm going to pull in that little shorter piece, the one that's two and three quarters, and do the same ink blending on this wave. This is where my mermaid's gonna sit. So I'm using the milled lavender and then coming in with the dusty concord. And I'm just using a scrap piece of paper to hold it so I don't leave any marks or fingerprints in the ink since it's kind of still wet. So I've got these really pretty colored metallic watercolors. They came from Amazon, I think. Everything's in Japanese on these. But I thought that these had some really nice colors that match the colors in my card. So instead of doing my usual gold, I'm doing some pinkish lavender on the waves and then I'm doing a little bit of that same color along the bottom of the mountains. I'm trying to keep this color just at the bottom. And then I'll also add a little bit to the top and I'm flicking it off the edge of my block so I get smaller splatters instead of those really big dots. And then I'm going to do the same at the very tip top of the mountain. And I feel like flicking it off the block allows you to control this. Like you can put it sort of in one spot. And then there is a pretty blue in here as well. So to add some dark dots to this and some texture, I'm pulling in that blue and just adding a few of those to the waves. Now I'm going to pull in an aqua color and actually paint in a little waterfall falling down between the mountaintops there. And then I'm using the white in this set to 
add in the spray at the bottom of the waterfall. Now this is going to get hidden a little bit with the layers in front of it, but I just think it's a really fun detail. It makes you want to kind of look down in between those layers of the card and see what's at the bottom of the waterfall. And then I added some white splatters just to that kind of empty area of the mountains. So I'll set this aside to dry, and then I'm going to work on my trees and my flowers. So I've got some colors pulled from some of the textured canvas cardstock packs and I'm going to use these little flowers. And these are from the spring sprig die set. And I like that it cuts out three at a time so I can make a whole bunch. So here are my little tea pieces. These are where my little pieces on my platform are going to go and I'm just putting a piece of double-sided tape across the top. So I can peel that off and stick that to the back of my waves and my mountains. So here is that front piece. I'm going to do the same for the middle piece. Now this one of course is wider than my T, so I'm just making sure I've got it centered up on there using my grid mat as a guide. And then finally I have my mountains. And then of course I can cut that extra piece off the one that goes in the middle because I don't need the piece that folds down. So I'm just going to lay these one on top of each other and kind of get a feel for where my pieces go and start to glue them down. To me it's a lot easier to kind of arrange my images on these before I put them in the box. So my little mermaid's going to go right here in the front and I'm actually going to trim off her rock and shift her over so she's not quite so centered and I've got her on one side and the boat on the other side kind of framing up my waterfall in the mountains. So I also have these palm trees from the palm tree border and I'm just going to cut them apart and just use the trees. I don't really care about the border part. I like that there's some trees in clusters of two and then I have this single one and I'm just placing these directly on to my mountain piece. So I cut the main piece here from some paper bag cardstock and I'm just gluing that directly on to my mountain. Thought about putting this tree up at the top of the waterfall but decided to put it at the bottom. And then for the tops of the trees, I cut some from cilantro and I also cut some from some peacock cardstock. So I kind of have this dreamy, whimsical, different colors of palm trees, not just the regular green. I really like the peacock ones. I think that's a fun look with the teal color on top of the palm trees. So I'm just adding the tops to the five that I've got here. I will add another one when I start to assemble things. And then I've got those little flowers that I cut out. I've cut them out of some different colors of pinks and purples. Again, all keeping in the same kind of color scheme that my inspiration fabric had. I'm adding a little green flower to my mermaid's hair and then I'm going to add some of these little flowers to this piece as well as the piece with the ship on it. So to put my pieces in my box so I can start to see what things are going to look like, I'm just going to fold that little tab under on my mermaid piece here and slip that through the slot. And then I'm going to pull it tight, fold that little tab under, and then I can take off the liner paper on that double-sided tape on that large tab and fold the base up. So you can see there how that is going to fold up and start to take shape. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the same with the mountains. So I'm just folding that little tab on the bottom of the T, adding some adhesive to the bottom of it. And then this one's going to sort of go the other direction. So I'm folding it differently to make sure I have it right. I've got that little tab glued down and then I can pull off the liner from that double-sided tape and fold up the bottom. So I've got my two shaped pieces here, one with the mountains and one with the mermaid. And then I can add the piece with the ship to the center. So I'll just add adhesive all over the back of that vertical piece of the T. That glues right to that rectangle solid piece that's going to 
sandwich in between the two boxes, let's say, or the two platforms. So I'll pull the tape off the little tab so I can put together this long piece, which is the outside of the box. I've put three pieces of tape all over that solid rectangle. This is gonna make sure it holds together well. And then I can fold these over and match up those two rectangles and then also match up that tab on the other side. And then here is my box. So now that my box is formed, I can start to embellish it a little bit more. I thought it would be fun to add some of these little flowers like down in between the layers so that if you were looking at this from the top, there's even more things happening down in the water. And then I'm adding some flowers to the waves. There's where I'm adding them to that middle piece where the ship is. I do like assembling the pieces before I put them in the box, but once you put them in box, the box and see them together, you always see other places where you could add just a little bit more. Now I'm using the add-on to the platform pop-up. I've cut this from Bristol cardstock, and I'm using the other mountain border, which has the smaller mountains. And then I can fold on the score lines that the add-on die created. And before I put this behind my mountains, this is just to kind of create a back to this whole little scene, I'm going to add the same distressings that I added to the mountain previously. So mostly chip sapphire, getting that chip sapphire all over. It would be cute too, I think, to make maybe the mountains a different color, but I didn't want to introduce another color into all this. And then, of course, I have that Uncharted Mariner at the bottom. You won't see the bottom of this too terribly much because those mountains on that third little panel are pretty tall. But I do think that adding these to the very back of the box really kind of finished it off and kind of contained everything into this little dreamy Neverland scene. I didn't even bother adding any splatters to this because like I said it's really just kind of containing the mountains in the background and you're not going to see it too much. So I'm using that thin double-sided tape right along the bottom on the back side and then you can take this and tuck it right inside the scallop edge of the box and it fits in there perfectly. And then I like to flatten it out and make sure that tape is really stuck down well. And this is where I decided to add another palm tree because when I looked at this from the front, the mermaid kind of hid the palm trees and it just looked like nothing was on that side of the mountain unless you looked at different angles. So I just thought this added a little bit more color to that background. Just one more palm tree. And then now for the sentiment part, I am stamping the sentiment that says, Have a Magical Day. This is from the Dream Big stamp set, and I'm just going to cut it with my scissors so that I can stack it into two lines instead of one, and it will fit on this little panel. This little panel is cut from some ballet slipper cardstock, and this is part of the platform pop-up die set, so it's going to fit perfectly on the front of my box. So I'll just add this with liquid glue to the front of the box and this is going to help break up the kind of solidness of the outside of the box a little bit. I've also got some of my little flowers still left over and I'm just going to add a few dots of glue and sprinkle those around so that the outside of my box matches the scene on the top of the box. So I've added a few of those to the front overlapping the panel, which I think is a really nice look. And then I'm also going to add some to the sides. You could also add some to the back, which I did not. The back of this, because the mountains are white on the back, it isn't really completely covered. I have done that before. If you saw the Little Mermaid card that I made, I did do the whole back of the background. I'm adding a little bit of stickles just around, not even to every flower, I'm adding it to just a few. I'll add a little bit to my palm trees. I'm also going to add some to my mermaid's hair and my mermaid tail because you need to have a glittery tail. I'll add some to the tops of the mountains. 
And to the waves, I just like to add little bits of this glitter pretty much everywhere. It really does kind of make things start to catch your eye and shine. I'm also adding some to the stripes on my ship's sails there. And then finally, I thought it needed a little bit more at the tops of these mountains. So I decided some clouds would be fun. So I have the smallest and the middle size little stitch clouds from the spring showers die set. These are my favorite clouds to use. And I'm just gluing those to the back side of the mountain so they look like they're behind a really tall mountain. Of course, I need to add some glitter to those. And then I decided to add my little shooting star with a tiny piece of acetate. So I'm cutting a really thin piece of acetate there. I will use a glue dot to attach this to the back of the star. And then I'll just trim it down because it's a lot longer than it needs to be. And then I'm going to add two glue dots to the bottom part of this piece of acetate. I feel like that holds it in place really well when you add two, when you've got kind of an arm like this. If you add one, it acts as a hinge and it can move around. And then I'm just going to attach that coming out from behind the clouds and the mountain. So you have your shooting star up in the sky and then this is my finished card and I just think it turned out so pretty and so dreamy and I love this kind of different take on Neverland. So I hope today's card and video has inspired you to look around the world around you in your craft room when you're out and about and maybe you can find some card inspiration, different color schemes, different ideas, and different things for you to try. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.